Pastor Lewin. Welcome, uh, ready to go. Thank you, sir. Yes, um, the story of the IPM. For many people uh, who have not been associated with this historical organization of so many years, they may think that it's just one of those post-1994 institutions, but this is a very old organization, the history of which I think uh, is worth telling. And, and I think you are the most per right person to just take people down the memory lane. What led to the IPM's establishment? At that time, it was called Institute of Personnel Management. Now it's the Institute of People Management, basically, just to move with times. Uh, and I know you came into contact with it as a student, but you studied the history of IPM uh, from where it started. And I think this is a heritage that we need to unpack. Thank you, Sammy. Mm. Yes, I did study with IPM. I have an IPM diploma. I also served in IPM structures as a student. And when I started working, mm. I served as a chairperson first in, in Pretoria mm. and later in Joburg. Yeah. But how IPM came about is there's a lady called um, Professor Isabel White yeah. who arrived in South Africa in 1938 with her husband who was appointed as a professor at Rhodes University yes. in Grahamstown. Yes. Now, this woman was also an academic. Yes. Where did they come from? They came, they came from England. Yes. And then she discovered that... Um, as far as people were concerned, there were no processes. People were just like machines. Mm. And then she started doing research in how people should be regarded or viewed in the workplace. Mm. And also did research in issues that affect women in mm. the Eastern Cave. Yes. And there were unions at that time and then the, the union at the time was called Food and Leather Workers State Union. Mm. And then she told me that whatever work I'm doing, whatever research I'm doing, they also need to know and give their feedback. Yes. So you can see how advanced she was at the time. Yes. And management agreed. Mm. And she established good working relationships with this leather and workers trade union. Mm. And then she realized that there was no forum for HR professionals while she was doing this work. Mm. Then she went to the companies in the Eastern Cape to say, guys, let's form an HR forum, personal, personal management forum mm. for HR professionals. Mm. But then they were, some of them were called, were called at the time welfare officers. Welfare officers. Well, welfare officers. Yes. At the time. Mm. And then they agreed, and a group of about 20 from local companies there started coming together. And she started talking about working conditions, uh, selection processes, aptitude testing, lighting in the, in the, in the, in the, in the factories and how absenteeism should be handled, and all other welfare-related matters, particularly for women, things such as crashes, treat nutrition. At that time, say, mm. I think she was more advanced. Mm. Mm. It, 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 sounds like, it sounds like it was an offshoot of the Industrial Revolution era from the West. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And then, and, and then, and then these people are great. And the first branch of IPM was started in, in Grahamstown in, the, in, in, in that area in 1945. Yes. 
And then this one started, through her research, started moving throughout the country to present the outcome of her research, the results of her research. Mm. And she met people in Johannesburg in 1946, and he, he brought them together and said, guys, this is the idea, this is what has to happen mm. as far as people management, personal management is concerned, as it was called at that time. Yes. She went to Cape Town and did the same. She went to Devon and did the same. Mm. And the whole thing snowballed there. Yeah. It's, it's, it's snowballed to un, 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 unrecognizable proportions. Mm. Mm. And in 1945, around those periods, they then confirmed that IPM is a branch of the uh, Association mm. Institute of Lewa Management in Great Britain. Mm. Mm. at the time mm. Mm. And, and IPM grew the excitement the interest the passion you know was felt throughout the country mm. and IPM started establishing branches then powerful branches mm. big companies participated in IPM they mm. supported it financially it, it became a uh, an institute to be reckoned with. with. Mm. And then while she was still in, 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 in what do you call it, in, 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 in Rose University, mm. they started uh, an HR diploma there. Mm. And that diploma grew to become the IPM diploma that, we, that was then introduced at that time. Mm. And that became an attraction to business mm. to say if, I, if, if you want to go into Asia, firstly, the first requirement is that you must have an Asia and an IPM diploma. Yes. That is also what attracted me to so, say, okay, so if that is the case, then I must also study uh, IPM diploma, which I did. Mm. And then all the branches started having committees mm. like we, 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 we have today. Mm. Having committees started uh, IPM diploma, as I said, and then from the IPM diploma, they went into uh, the convention. I think the convention was started in 1956. Yeah. Uh, IPM annual convention started in 1956, and then it has been, been held each and every year since then without fail. Mm. I think that's a great achievement there. That's a huge achievement. And, and, and it is has been growing from strength, it, regardless of the economic conditions. Yes. I feel the, all the other, you know, you are aware, all the other conferences in HR, you don't see them often. Yes. But this one remains, regardless. It, it, it is a tradition. It remains there. Uh, if you it, don't it go to IPM convention and you are an HR professional, it's like something is missing. And then IPM also played a, a major role in Africa mm. and also in the world. Yes. IPM is the administrative, administrative arm of the African Human Resource Confederation. We have a confederation of all the HR professional uh, uh, bodies in mm. Africa. Mm. IPM is for the for the for the for the for the for the SADC region because we have two. The one in the north, the the, the administrative arm for the north. We are the ad, uh, administrative arm for the SADC region, mm. but we work mm. together. Mm. Mm. And all the administration, the meetings come via IPM. Yes. yes. On behalf of the World Federation of People Management Associations. Mm. Mm. And we have been participating in the, since I joined, the, even before I joined IPM, IPM has been participating in the, uh, of, in the board of the World Federation of People Management Associations. It's called, Currently, it's called uh, World Federation of Human People, people Management Associations. Ah, I see. Oral Federation yes. of People Management yes. Associations. Yes, 
Currently, Raj is serving in that structure. Yes. yes. And during my tenure, mm. I also know that the Zimbabwe IPM was established with the support of IPM, but I was not there then, but I know that. Yes. The ones that I piloted and, and, and initiated and, 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 and played a leading role in, the, in their establishment mm. is Mauritius. Mauritius, yes. Lesotho, mm. Swaziland, yes. And Namibia, mm. and Botswana. So yeah. I was traveling to all those countries to show me, show them how the structures mm. uh, should be established, mm. governance processes, mm. and everything. And they are all called IPMs. They are all called IPMs. Mm. And they although come. Lesotho, to... Although Lesotho is a subset of IPM South Africa. Mm. And Botswana, but uh, Mauritius, Namibia, and Swaziland mm. have matured to a lower where they can operate. But mm. they still all come here. They still they, they still come to our annual convention. They I still see, come to our annual I convention. I see them every year uh, represented there. Exactly. Yeah, and then I think I think we need more in in, in many other countries. Uh, uh, they may not call themselves IPM, but HR profession must be must 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 come together to influence the the, the management of people in industries through through the through the uh, uh, what are for example management mm. we have this other um, uh, uh, association in the north yes that coordinates like we do that those countries the western West African, all those, they, could, they are doing the same coordination yes. as IPM does. Yes, yes. And then I, I, I go? know in Nigeria they do have a similar structure. Yes. I, I've actually been in touch with them, and I did, and they know about us, and I think they are talking to our CEO, Dr. Jerry Gule, as well. So that's correct. And I think this is beautiful for Africa because, honestly, <laughs> there there comes a time where. We can't allow our companies going in across borders and we remain behind and not contributing to the transformation and, and, and positioning of HR professional professionally. That's that's what you say me. Yeah. We, we 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 from a human resource point of view, we need to support both our comp our, our local companies yeah. and the companies that come invest in South Africa. Yes, and the how the, how the different laws operate in different countries. Yes, and, and, and ready to go, there's a piece of history that I would like us to touch before we, we I want to come back to this, this topic of, of, of our role as HR professionals in the continent. But I want to go back, and, and they always say that it's important to know where you come from so that you can know where you are going. There was a dynamic within South Africa. Uh, IPM, uh, thanks, thanks to, to, to Isabel White, but but the leadership of IPM was not immediately representative of all the race groups in South Africa at first, right? That's correct. It was very much white, male-dominated, and, uh, and at a certain part time, there was a breakthrough where black people were brought in, even at the leadership level. Let's touch on that history a little bit. Yes. In, in, in the 1980s, In the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the 1980s, it was tough in South Africa. Yes. There were rolling mass actions. Yes. And the uh, Sullivan Coast also were uh, putting demands yes. on the uh, multinationals. Yes. To say, if you don't change the living conditions and the primary conditions of black people in South Africa, Will force you to disinvest. Yes. Will 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 we'll support the sanctions that are applied on South Africa. Mm. So through 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 that pressure, uh, a black president was was elected. Mm. Jv Magwaza. Yes. And he took over, mm. and we started seeing ourselves and identify with IPM fully. Mm. Although previously there were these very, uh, racial barriers that we were operating under. Mm. Now those very 
pressure, uh, uh, racial barriers were being removed. Mm. Mm. And, and, and he served IPM exceptionally well. And, and, and JP did not do a 100% overhaul whereby white were replaced by black, but he, he integrated the, the, the leadership, right? He started, we started coming in, we started, the integration started, uh, but in 1982, the leadership then decided that IPM should be split into two. Yes. The academic or professional development side mm. and the standard side. Yes. Um, but as time went on, that, that arrangement didn't seem to work as it was intended. Mm. Because mm. as you are aware, there were conflicts. I don't understand how, what was motivating, what was motivating those con conflicts. Mm. But there were conflicts. I did serve in the award the other body, mm. but still I could sense the underlying tensions that were there. Mm. But we were open, and they, we, we kept talking to them. We still remember we also signed a memorandum of understanding again. Yes. Uh, if, yeah, so I think 2008, somewhere there. Yes. To say, no, as HR professionals, we need to work together. Mm. Fortunately, mm. most parties still pursued the intention to cooperate. Yes. And a big opportunity arose when the Department of Health was looking for people to uh, facilitate their cultural transformation mm. in totality. Yeah. So both of us, that is the IPM and the South African Board of Personal Practice, we are appointed to deal with HR and people management issues. Yes. And we work together as a team. Yes. We held meetings together. Mm. We presented together. Mm. The, 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 the whole thing worked marvelously. Mm. And I guess, I guess now... Professionally, it was professionally focused. Mm. To mm. say we're here to deliver, and we're here to support each other, and so that we can support the department. Mm. Mm. Yeah. 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 And, 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 and interesting enough, the, the two bodies are also equally recognized by SACWA as a professional bodies, right? And then both bodies have applied to SACWA for registration, and... FACWA give both ways space to operate and represent the Asian professionals in South Africa. This is beautiful, man. And, and, uh, and, and we are working, and uh, Dr. Jerry Julius, even from my observation, even entrenched the relationship even further mm, in mm. terms of working together with the, with mm. the other body. Mm, mm. Mm. Because the work is so much that all of us have a role to play. No, I said so much. You know, I'm serving on university councils. Yeah. I've, I've, I've discovered that the universities are very good at academic papers, mm. but they also need support from a political point of view mm. on how things are done. Mm. Mm. And, 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 and really, Toko, the, and, and I think that is also speaking to the this outcry there, that it's very important that the curriculum development boards of universities and all other institutions of learning needs to be populated by practitioners from the industry to inform the direction of education. That's quite true. That's why universities have what is called uh, HR adversary bodies. Mm. They call HR directors and experts to sit mm. on, on what they are doing and, and evaluate the, the programs. I'm, I'm also serving on the University of you know, the University of technology, yes. specifically on program development, curriculum development. They tell us, mm. this is what you want to do. Say, mm. oh, this one is fine, this one is outdated. Mm. Please, can you include this and this and this? And this? Mm. So, so mm. that relationship, mm. I think the universities are aware of that. Mm. Mm. And, and tell me, um, since J.P. Magwaza, uh, who were the subsequent uh, presidents after him? Okay, it was Jamie Magwaza, mm. Tiseso, Tukuru, mm. Mpo Magwana, mm. Mpo Letlape, mm. Shelizin, mm. um, 
Raj. Sandy, Sandy Mohanathan. Yes. And then when she moved out, Jerry Mudifi came on a temporary basis. Yes. And then Raj. Yes, Sipasan. Raj Sipasan. And then uh, Babalasi Bulunga. Wow. Great leadership, yeah? The sustainability of the institution is unquestionable. Yes. And, and, and the governance processes are observed. Mm. They make sure that at the required time the elections and the president is elected. And it has been going on and it's still going on. I don't have any doubt that it will change. Mm. It will change, you know, that they must change the memorandum of what is this thing from incorporation. Thing from Memorandum of incorporation. Yes, and yes. and and they are quite aware of that. Yes, and uh, and uh, you you also represented the uh, uh, IPM at the South African Human Resources uh, Council, right? That's correct. That's correct. Yeah, and how did that come about? We we were we had a convention. Hmm. 2008 or 2009, somewhere there. And then a lot of government officials were there. Mm. And also uh, the Minister of Higher Education then, uh, Dr. Blaise Zimande, presented. Mm. So during the presentation and the discussion, there was a connection between what the HFDC is doing Mm. and what IPM stands for. Mm. Then they said, there's this, this thing in the government where we need support. Mm. Then we said, to 100%, mm. we will appoint, and the, and the board appointed me, recommended me to serve on that uh, committee mm. uh, with Impolitape. Mm. And we were part of developing the human resources National Human Resource Strategy. Mm. 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 And one, also when it was reviewed, we were part of that. Mm. And there were a lot of things that the uh, nationally, that the Human Resource Development Council is looking at mm. in terms of people development, skills development, and the key areas where skills are needed. Uh, it also identified the fact that uh, at the universities, we don't have a, a good number of uh, uh, professors, indigenous professors. Mm. So we need to have a, a academic development program. Mm. And mm. that program should also look at how it develops and mentors emerging at academics. Mm. And mm. because I'm serving in the University of Cosmonatal, uh, council, I, I can see those things are happening mm. at university level, wow. where 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 the, mm. the, the there's focus mm. on making sure that the universities develop uh, academics mm. in, in great numbers. Okay. Uh, how is the South African Human Resources Development Council structured? Where is it sitting in the government, and uh, and who, who who is sitting on it? All social partners are there. Mm. Business, mm. trade unions, civil society, universities is a collective of minds. Mm. And but, it's but, it's shared, but it's driven by the government. Yeah, it is said. No, it's collective. It's a collective. It's a collective news. But the chairperson is the deputy uh, president of the country. Yes. And the and the and the and the and the. Uh, Administrative arm um, is is within the Department of Higher Education. I see. I see. Yes. I see. Wow. It's a very good model. I hope I hope we sustain it. It, it doesn't disappear because it, it, it's really it, it's a think tank of some sort if I, I, I look at it from outside. It's a think tank and it used to organize this year we couldn't do it because of uh, the coronavirus, mm. but uh, uh, by annually, mm. there's a human resource summit, human resource HRDC summit that is held mm. Mm. Uh, 
and invite people from all over the country, mm. the world, who wow. c- come down to come and share their specific models and how they contribute to human cultural development in their countries. Mm. And last year, while I was still there, was when I came here to come and learn from us. Mm. Mm. And, we, and the, the HRDC is still supporting them even today in mm. terms of communication and ideas. Mm. Wow. Because it has been there for some time now, the, our own Human Rights Development Council. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Sure. Ready to go, you, you, you are an elder now. You, 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 you manage a very successful transition uh, in, 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 in the IPM to my friend, uh, Dr. Jerry Goulet. Uh, share with us how that has been uh, so that other people can learn. You know, having sit on top of the organization as a CEO for so many years uh, and, 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 and now seamlessly handing over to somebody, it looks very easy from outside, but I'm sure there are some, some, some models that you followed in, in doing that. Okay. Firstly, the whole thing was discussed at board level mm. that we need to prepare for succession. Yes. And the board will identify the successor. Mm. But I must be part of the process. Yes. I'm not just going to disappear. Yes. Even when I end over, I'm not going to say today the end of uh, 2016 is the end. Mm. It's going to be the end, but I'm still going to be involved with the projects, and that's what happened. Yes. So all the projects, well, Dr. Jerry Gulo was taking over, were run by me, handing them over to him bit by bit. This is where we are, this is what happened, and over. Mm. This is what happened, this is what is still outstanding. Just mark it and record it so that you can take it over and pursue it mm. to finality. Mm. And then they also allowed me to give input, even today, when they have anything, they say, what is your suggestion, what do you think? And I just write and say, this is what I think, this is how you can look at it and make a decision, but this is, these are my thoughts. Mm. Um, but also, the relationship with the staff and me, mm. as a family, said, yes. it's still a bond now. <laughs> 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 it's, it's, it's difficult <laughs> It is a family. Yeah. But they understand that now I'm, a, I'm an elder. I just sit under the tree. <laughs> the boss is there. The father is there. Yeah. But the father also understands. They told him that they must know that people are still calling me and say, uh, he said, no, I'm aware. <laughs> don't, don't, <laughs> don't be surprised. Yeah. I'm doing it on your behalf, but I'm passing over to you. Yeah. As long as you know that there's that relationship that people to, to call me at night and mm. ask me this and this. Mm. But it will reach you. Yes, yes. Yeah. that's beautiful, man. That's beautiful. The, the work, the work uh, needs to continue without any friction. Um, yeah. No, we need we need to build a nation. Say eh? we we have an opportunity now. We have been fighting for many, for so many years. Mm. Now it's time to build. Mm. It's time to focus. It's mm. time to develop. Mm. We it's need to, to grow. we need to build a nation. But I, I also feel very strongly that we also have. To contribute to the continent because we have a lot to offer, but also a lot to learn from the continent. That's quite true. That's, mm. that's quite true. Mm. The yeah. continent is very diverse, and uh, all of us must be involved. Ready to go? It is. It has really been. I've always wanted to do this, and I'm very glad that uh, I found time to talk to you. Uh, and I, I know it's not the last time. Uh, I, I think we've laid the foundation, and I'm sure the listeners. Uh, are going to find this very insightful and they may want to to get back to to you and clarify certain things. Of course, we know that the, the IPM is there. That's where the, 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 the reservoir is. But uh, are you still strong and healthy and willing to be accessed? And if people want to say, hi, uh, we want to consult the elder, how do they get all of you? They want to get that feedback, they want just to go to UK Z10 and uh, for the University of Technology mm. and the South African Society for Corporate Education. They will tell you that when this elder is in, <laughs> it must be sharp. <laughs> and the IPM, of course. 
and I and I have him and I have him. You right. will just ask him, hey, yes. when you talk to him, you must shut yourself because yes. he 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 will outperform you if you are not careful. I, I can be counted in that. I'm, I've, I've, <laughs> I've, I've I've experienced that. They can call me at Cometa. I can tell them. But I also I think what is pleasant is to to know that you are willing to share and contribute. No, I'm still alive, Sammy. I still have a, I'll contribute until I can no longer breathe, to be honest with you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but as long as I can breathe, yeah. I'm available to support people and help them. Wonderful. Any <laughs> closing remarks from your side? No, I think thank you for the opportunity, first thing. Mm. I think we have an opportunity to, re to build the world that we all aspire to live in. Mm. The world based on humanity, the world based on supporting each other, the world of not all. If I have information that can help you, I must share it. Mm. I mustn't hold it. Mm. I do understand that there are issues where you need to uh, charge. That one is understandable. But there are other things that you can just open a person's mind or eyes so that he or she can see what path to follow. Mm. So mm. I'm available to, to interact with people um, to say, okay, you have it right. What have you thought about this and this and this and this? Mm. Mm. That, that I can do. Wow. Raditeko, thank you very much for your generosity. We have certainly learned a lot from you. I, 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 I know we can talk forever, but I know we will talk again next time. Thank you, Sammy. Thanks for the opportunity. Mm. I hope I have, it, it will help. I will hear from the listeners how they feel about our discussion. But I'm available to assist wherever I'm needed, to be honest. Thank you very much. Ladies Thank and you, gentlemen, sir. that was uh, Ray Elijah Diteku. I, I think it confirms what I said at the beginning, that we could easily call him Dr. Professor Ray Elijah Diteku. <laughs> <laughs> the legend himself of human resources in Africa. <laughs> Once again, uh, my name is Sam Zima. I am the CEO and the executive business coach at Commerce IGOC International. As stated, you can visit us at www.commerce-goc.com. And if you are interested in joining Commerce Friends and Supporters Club (MPO) so that we can reach you every now and then as we hold such high-powered talks. Visit the website at www.commerzaclub.africa and you can join us online. Drop us a note if you want to be part of this program at callcenter at commerza-goc.com. And that was Commerza Radio Africa. We thank you for tuning in. We are looking forward to welcoming you at our next broadcast. Goodbye and take care.